Welcome to the Global Gaming Business Podcast, the industry's first and longest running podcast now in our 17th year. I'm Roger Gross, the publisher of GGB, and this week we sit down with Corby Carrison, the event vice president of G2E, for RX or Re-X positions on the prospects for G2E 2020, scheduled for October 10th through 13th in Las Vegas. This week's podcast is sponsored by IGT, introducing the Diamond RS gaming machine, mixing iconic slots and evolved game variations designed to exceed expectations. Discover your next legend at IGT.com slash Diamond RS. Welcome to the Global Gaming Business Podcast. My guest today is Corby Karras in the event Vice President for G2E. Uh, Corby, it's great to see you. Uh, I'd rather do this in person, but it uh, looks like you're, you're nice and cool inside your office there. Not too hot there, right? <laughs> cool for the moment, but it, yeah. it's going to heat up this week. So it's that's life in Las Vegas, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I hope I hope you get rid of that heat by the time I get back in mid-September. <laughs> So we're talking about G2E. This is the uh, the, the first you know, year since 2019 that G2E returns in any way kind of close to normal. Uh, what, what kind of response are you getting from the attendees and the exhibitors uh, You know, looking forward to this show? The response has really been great. Everyone is really looking forward to being together again. And looking back over the last couple of years where, of course, we were digital in 2020, we did a hybrid hybrid event last year, which was really well received. But of course, it's not the experience that everyone looks forward to with G2E. And this year will be so much more like that experience that everyone knows and loves with G2E. We're really looking forward to being a, a global event that is able to convene safely together this year. Great. So I know you're following the, the COVID policies of of uh, of, of uh, Nevada, which means no masks and uh, no vax uh, required. Uh, and any any other COVID uh, things that you need to think about before you come to G2E this year? Really, just keep in mind that we are staying with the local COVID policies. Mm-hmm. So that you're right. Right now, that means no masks, no verification of vaccinations. Of course, we have to be agile. And if there is some sort of uh, a restriction that would come into place, we're going to follow that. But right now, we are no restrictions in place and back to the way that we are accustomed to G2E being. Great, great. So that doesn't mean, though, that... that (laughs) You, you can't wear masks because you feel more comfortable that way. I, I mean, I've seen it here on the East Coast pretty frequently, uh, people wearing masks, and, and I'm fine with that. Well, really, it's, it's all about what you as an individual are comfortable with. Certainly, if, if you would like to wear a mask, we invite you to do so, and we will have masks and hand, sin- hand sanitizer there available for anyone to use. But it's up to your individual level of comfort. We want everyone to have a great experience at G2E. Great, great, great. So uh, how many exhibitors are you having this year as compared to the last uh, fully live show in 2019? Well, that's pr- it's an exciting thing for us. We are up over 300 participating companies, which is a lot more than we had in uh, 21. And we still have over a month to go. So we we just have so much excitement daily about uh, can we participate? Can we be there? And we're really looking forward to a robust show floor this year. Sure. You know, I've been talking to a lot of companies that are kind of new to the industry, particularly the online gaming uh, side, and uh, they're telling me they want to be there this year. I mean, is this a is this a segment that's that's growing for you guys? It definitely is a growing segment. It it was growing last year even more so this year, and we're seeing growth not only on the expo hall floor with iGaming companies, but across into the education program as well. And they really do come together. Everywhere where you experience G2E, whether it's in the hallway, meeting up with someone, sure. just a lot of new folks who are interested in this in this segment that we are certain is going to grow for us in the future. Great, great. So, you know, you've had interactive tools in the past, and frankly, I'm, I'm old school, so I haven't used a lot of them, but I'm looking at some of them this year, and they look pretty interesting. What, what, what are some of the, the new things you're bringing into the, uh, and new and, and improved things you're bringing into the show this year? Well, certainly the G2E mobile app will be there as it has been in years past. And that is something that will really help people to connect with one another and to get the best experience possible out of G2E, whether it's connecting with another attendee or 
looking at the uh, the recommendations that are served up to you based on the indications that you make when you register for G2E, mm -hmm. the app will, will recommend for you different exhibitors to visit based on your priorities and even potentially some uh, education sessions that might be interesting to you. So we definitely do encourage the download and use of the G2E mobile app. And especially when you get on site, just helping to find the exhibitors that you're interested in. That it's a really important thing. Sure. One other new thing this year that I encourage everyone to be on the lookout for is a G2E networking lounge. That is, is something we haven't done before, but we've heard from people in the post-show surveys that everyone wants to connect with one another around topics of interest. So we are putting together a, a space that is just for that. We are we're populating it with different meetups and just different opportunities to come together with people of common interest and uh, sit down, chat with people and and connect with your community. Sure. Well, that makes a lot of sense. You know, when, when I was uh, involved with G2E, I used to give the opening uh, breakfast. Uh, uh, what, here's what you're going to see today. And and I, I noticed a lot of people gathered for that breakfast just because they could see other people and, and get a start to their day. So that, that makes a lot of sense. And, and that's open to all attendees uh, of G2E? It is. It, it's right there on the exhibit hall floor and you can't miss it. Okay. Now, you, you've always had a lot of other networking uh, 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 abilities for some of the small niches, maybe maybe the tribal members or Latin America, things like that. Will that be also happening this year? It will, Roger. There are plenty of different networking opportunities. Certainly, the larger, the smaller, the happenstance where you where you meet people on the uh, on the show floor or in the hallway. But one of those things I think that we really want to in encourage is for people to go and visit G2E's Innovation Lab. And that's a space on the show floor that showcases up and coming technologies, things that we be believe that you'll be seeing more of in the future and connecting with people through through that zone as well. Sure, sure. And of course, the fun tech and networking uh, things like the the opening uh, reception uh, that's uh, obviously being held. Where, where's that being held this year? That you look for on Monday this year, mm -hmm. and that will be in the uh, in the Venetian ballrooms. And be on the lookout for more information coming your way on that. Okay, great, great. So one of the things I always look forward to is the keynote uh, events, and I know sometimes you like to hold that to uh, to a surprise toward the end. But uh, what can you tell us about that for this year? There will be three keynote addresses this year, one Monday, one Tuesday, one Wednesday, and rest assured, they will all be content that people will be really interested in hearing about how the industry is growing, the future of the industry, and what that means for all different people, different constituents across the industry. So watch for very, very soon more information coming on that, but you will be pleased and interested to see what's going on with the keynote addresses. Okay, great. I'm certainly looking forward to that. So you always come out with some new things. What What are some of the new things that you can expect at G2E this year? You know, I really have to, with, to answer that question, hand it over more than anything to the exhibitors because they're the ones that really bring it. We right. do have the, the innovation lab at G2E, which, as I mentioned, will have some new concepts there. It, it will have uh, different kind of TED Talk sort of sessions, but other, other favorites will be coming back like the pitch competition. Mm -hmm. um, but when, when you're really talking about the new, I think you have to look on the education program as well as the expo hall floor to new technologies across core gaming, as well as a lot still going on in sports betting and more than ever before going on in the iGaming space. Sure, sure. So I went to the Indian Gaming Show this year in Anaheim, and uh, I think they set a record in terms of attendance. Uh, obviously, tribal gaming is an important part of, of any trade show in the industry, but uh, but just as much so for G2E. Uh, how are you working with them to to really, uh, uh, you know, give them content that they, they want and, and really make them feel at home? Well, the Indian Gaming Association has long been a strong partner with G2E, and that doesn't change for this year either. We partner together with them to produce a large number of education sessions. They have a full track across three days of different 
tribal gaming topics that are relevant to folks who work in the tribal gaming space and even outside of the tribal gaming space. It's just really great information. And they will be represented on the expo hall floor as well this year. So no question, Indian Gaming Association is a really important partner of G2E, and we look forward to seeing them again very soon. Yeah, no question about that. Uh, um, and you do have a, a tribal leaders lounge as well, right? We do. That will be on the show floor. So look for more information on the location of that mm -hmm. as well. Uh, last week, the AGA came out with the uh, the nominees for the uh, American Gaming Association Gaming Hall of Fame. You know, three terrific uh, candidates came out, and uh, obviously, uh, there there will, that will be happening at the show. It's an invitation only event, however, but uh, I, I'm sure you'll see those those candidates there. Uh, uh, is that that important to you? That that really that uh, Hall of Fame event. It's, it's really critical to the industry. And of course, the American Gaming Association is our partner in G2E. So it, it's really wonderful to be able to look upon the, the selections of the Gaming Hall of Fame winners and reflect upon all of the, the contributions that they have made to the industry over the years and just phenomenal thinking about those contributions and how they have uh, impacted gaming in the past and leading into the future. Right. Absolutely. Well, you know, the, the, the candidates are terrific. Uh, uh, Gavin Isaacs, who, who's a longtime friend, has been through s several companies, came here with Aristocrat and ended up uh, with Scientific Games, great uh, uh, supporter of the industry. Mike Rumbolts, who has has uh, uh, experience on all sides of the industry, from, from the operator to the you know, to the manufacturer to a regulator. I mean, he was a, the chief of the Nevada Gaming Control Board for a while. So really good people. And then, of course, Virginia McDowell and Virginia was a, the CEO of, of Isle of Capri, but but uh, what she's done since her retirement was really uh, get the global gaming women off the ground. And I, they have a huge event at G2E, which uh, which anybody can sign up for, uh, and, and uh, it's called a Kick Up Your Heels. Uh, uh, explain how that uh, really helps uh, the show move along. Well, G2E does partner with Global Gaming Women, and I don't want to steal their thunder because I, I know that they have different announcements that they make over the location right. and the time. But I, I can tell you that we are partnering with GGW again. They will have their annual kick up your heels, and they also will have a, a networking um, coffee uh, breakfast in the morning on Thursday, which also people can sign up for. So really wonderful ways for everyone, not not only women, but everyone is welcome to participate um, and, and really lift up women's voices in the industry. That's true. I attended that uh, breakfast one uh, last year, the last year they held it, and it was it was terrific. I mean, you get a lot of, out of it. And it's really fun. Yeah, <laughs> The power of the networking is really amazing. For sure. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned uh, iGaming. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, the education program, do you, do you have uh, a lot of iGaming type of programs there? There are a lot of sessions. There's a full track on iGaming. So I would encourage anyone to check that out on the website, globalgamingexpo.com. And there there's an, the, a link under education for the schedule and the, the current um, sessions. So you can check that out, decide if that's something that you want to participate in. But yes, definitely a lot of content on iGaming. And like I mentioned, it does cross over. It, it transcends the, the education program over to all of the G2E experience in iGaming. Sure, sure, no question. And uh, it's a lot of interest in iGaming this year. Obviously, sports betting is is huge. Uh, but uh, when you when you move it to iGaming to casino, online casino, uh, we all know that that's the one that really makes the money for the the, the uh, casino company. So uh, uh, there's a lot of interest in that. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of talk about that at G2E this year as well. I mean, we learned a lot in the last couple of years. And, and like so many initiatives, the pandemic was a catalyst for, for a lot of different things. And when uh, people weren't able to go to the casinos, um, certainly there was an interest in iGaming. And look at, look at where we've come That's just right. with, with that little bit of a catalyst. And you can be sure that there will be growth into the future on right. that. No question about that. 
And, and speaking about the future, you know, we, we've just seen uh, uh, two spectacular uh, revenue years for the gaming industry. Uh, 2021 was, was a record and 2022 is, is looking to be even greater than that. What does this say about the health of the industry and the importance of, of G2E to kind of help keep that going? Well, I think I think those numbers are a testament to the health and resiliency of the industry. And this is a strong industry built by strong people. And G2E is here to be the platform for that. So we're really excited to once again, be the show that everyone looks forward to and that really uh, creates an experience that is valuable to everyone. Yeah, no question. And uh, you guys at, at RX and at the AGA are doing a great job putting these things together. I know how hectic it gets these last few weeks uh, toward as you come up to the show. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll kind of take take some time to breathe and then uh, enjoy it when it gets there. We sure will, Roger. And and if, if I can just uh, make one suggestion for everyone who's prepping to come to G2E, make sure you do some pre-planning, make sure you get your badge in advance because no one likes to stand in a line at G2E, yeah. right? So um, go on the website, globalgamingexpo.com, get your, your pre-registration all taken care of, check out all the opportunities for special events or education that you might want to participate in get get those things organized on your calendar and the hotel room blocks are the the discounts are going away really soon so if you haven't made your hotel reservations i'd encourage you to do that right away so you get the best pricing on that too great great well corby thanks for the time uh, and good luck uh, at g2e october 10th through 13th so we're looking forward to seeing you there and uh, and seeing the rest of the industry there it's going to be fun to get together again can't wait to be back together again thank you roger Thank you. Hope you enjoyed this week's podcast sponsored by IGT. Introducing the Diamond RS gaming machine, mixing iconic slots and evolved game variations designed to exceed expectations. Discover your next legend at IGT.com slash Diamond RS. To learn more about AGEM and the issues they face, visit GGBmagazine.com. Subscribe to GGB News to get all the news of the gaming industry delivered to your desktop every Monday morning. Sign up at ggbnews.com and use the coupon code GGB180 for a free subscription. Don't miss a single episode of the podcast. Subscribe on Amazon, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify today. So we'll see you next time on the GGB Podcast.